Zinemo Zagreb 1, Chelsea nil. But am I surprised? Am I really surprised? Because I've been extremely positive recently. When really, positivity isn't something that we should have as Chelsea fans at this moment in time. Welcome to Chat and Breeze. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly from today's game. And I'll be honest with you. If you're a rival fan, stick around. You're gonna enjoy my pain. Welcome to the Gaff Guys, you guys. And days like this, I find it very tough to be a Chelsea fan. And the reason I say that is because Chelsea spend a lot of money. Chelsea set a lot of expectations. Chelsea have multiple millions of riches, yet Chelsea avidly make it their life mission to make my life hell when I watch my f the game I love. Because we've got a TikToker in midfield with Mason Mount who has no idea what he's doing. We've got Kai Havertz who's turning into Shy Havertz in front of my eyes and he's actually had a decent game apparently people are telling me today. We've got Hakim Ziyech doing his best impression for a Hall of Shame performance. And we've got Thomas Tuchel set, sending the boys out with minimal tactics. Because this isn't a team that I saw 18 months ago. This isn't a team that won the Champions League. This isn't a team that went to the Bernabeu and beat Madrid 3-2. This is not the team that played as a team. This is individuals going after their own records, going after their own stats, going after their own credit. Plaud it. This team stinks of Thomas Tuchel was going to get sacked. Let's review this game and let's talk about our cold heart truths because there is a lot to talk about today and it's not for everyone to get offended and shout because the boys today humiliated us. They literally humiliated us. So if you appreciate me doing these stupid videos after the game, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because I'm not gonna lie to you lot. It's tough to do it. On a loss, it is tough. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram in the DMs. That, that's literally the first pinned comment. Let's move on. I'm so annoyed. I don't even want to do the advertisement. We're starting with the downright ugly and the ugly is very simple. Mason Mount's performance today. Mason Mount has not been good all season. Mason Mount, bar one game this year, which was against Spurs and where he was okay, he's been very poor. He has been beyond poor. And I don't use this lightly, but big man thing. We have got a TikToker in midfield. Genuinely, he's better at this moment in time at TikToks than he is at football. What has Mason Mount become? Because I don't understand where Mason Mount's attributes no longer lie. He's not a front free player. He hasn't got the explosiveness. He's not a midfielder. He hasn't got the discipline. And someone on Twitter, I think it was Eurosport account or so Euro tactician, something like that. He put out a great tweet. He said, Mount neglects his midfield responsibilities in search of attacking, being an, another attacking presence. And it puts the initiative on the midfield to get overpowered. And I agree with this. It wasn't quote for both, it wasn't this. Because Mount, in my opinion, is a selfish player. Mount is what I like to call a glory player. He is the Bruno Fernandes of Chelsea Football Club and you can't convince me otherwise. This man wants to make sure he is written in the tabloids the next day. It doesn't matter to him if he puts in a good or great performance. For him, it's about the statistics. I don't care. You cannot persuade me otherwise. It is about the statistics. This this is all about the statistics for him. He wants to get a goal or an assist. Every bloody game, this man does the same thing. He goes the furthest person up the pitch, waiting for a tap in, waiting for a half volley. Nothing about the build up, nothing about the consequences of what happens if he leaves his midfield isolated. You're meant to be the link between the midfield and the attackers. Yet you are nothing more than a shadow striker. He is Deli Ali. He is bloody Deli Ali from when Deli Ali played for Tottenham and he was good on the hurricane. And the problem is, Mount's not even banging like Deli Ali at this moment in time. It is absolutely frustrating. Then we need to talk about Tuchel and his obsession with Aspilicueta. Thomas took Aspilicueta off at 45. Why on earth is Aspilicueta starting another game for Chelsea Football Club in 2022? This is the last ugly. Why is he starting? You have got a Trevor Chalabar. Trevor Chalabar has earned the right to play. Trevor Chalabar is more athletic. Trevor Chalabar is stronger. He's more of a threat from corners. He's better on the ball. He's more versatile, yet he does not play. Why? Because you want to bring in experience. Experience is useless if it's not utilized properly and if your legs are gone. He is going through, in my opinion, his Branislav Ivanovic farewell tour. This is what I'm calling. It was beyond pathetic, his first half performance today. This performance is up there with one of the worst performances I've seen under any manager at Chelsea Football. And I'm including AVB, I'm including Frank Lampard, I'm including uh, Carlos, uh, 
uh, uh, Big Phil Scolari. I am including the worst of the worst. Conte in that second season. This has been disgusting. And it all stemmed from Thomas Tuchel not doing the essentials right. Your job as a manager is make your players up for the game. If you can't do it, get out. I am backing Thomas Tuchel, but you know what? You are pushing my backing thin. I'm getting very angry and very frustrated. The bad. And now we need to talk about the bad. What went wrong? Bruh, the goal we conceded was pathetic. The goal we conceded stinks of lack of communication, a lack of unity, a lack of gelling. Yes, Koulibaly's new. Yes, Wesley Fofana is new. But those mistakes can get rectified. Koulibaly, you can't win that ball. Why are you going to win that ball? You didn't win it. Okay, we have to react. This happens, mistakes happen. Fafana needs to be quicker there. Fafana's quick, I don't know what it is. I hope he's carrying an injury because if that is him, explosive. The guy was with a ball, the guy was running with a ball, beat him there, slowed down and flicked it. And then to make matters worse, instead of going around Kepa and starting to cover the line, Fafana went across Kepa. Essentially, null and void Kepa. And for me, this is frustrating because Wesley Fafana you're going to be a great defender. You're going to make mistakes, I understand that. But today's performance was poor. Koulibaly, today's performance was poor as well. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit here and make up lies and protect these players because I like them. I don't do that on this channel. You don't want to do that, go to football therapy. Go to football therapy. He does that all the time. He'll protect all these players. He'll protect them because he wants interviews and stuff. Go and watch him. I, my channel, we don't do that. We speak the truth. I say what I saw with my eyes on eyes. I'm sorry. I speak my mind. Then we need to talk about Kai Havertz because Kai Havertz today, people say had a good game. I expect more from Kai. I really do. I expect more from Raheem. I expect more from Pulisic. I expect more from, from my forwards. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a deep block, but why is it every time there's a deep block, systemically, we can't break them down. There's no individual brilliance. No one's doing anything to get me happy to watch this team play for 90 minutes. There is nothing. Kai Havertz needs to be better. You need to drop into that midfield big man, pick up the ball and tr stop creating something. Because essentially Kai, you're not doing a false nine role, you're not playing the eight, you're not playing the ten. What are you doing? Realistically speaking, what are you doing? Today Kai Havertz was poor again. And I'm sorry, I hate to be this guy, but he is losing trust. Every single time I've seen him this season, I've been more and more frustrated with Kai Havertz because he is better than what he's showing. It's either Tuchel's not getting the best out of him or Kai Havertz has been absolutely crap and he's just not good enough to play. It's one of the two because evidently, that's what the evidence is showing me. This is what you're putting in front of me. And then finally, Hakim Ziyech, Hall of Fame performance. Hakim Ziyech's performance today was Hall of Shame. This was the worst performance, the worst cameo off the bench I have ever seen from a Chelsea player. I'm putting it up there with Bakayoko. I'm putting it up there with Conor Gallagher. This was disgusting. Not terrible, disgusting. He was individualistic consistently. He was crossing the ball when it's not on, refusing to play one twos, taking free kicks off players, catching the ball on the pitch. Yes, he caught the ball on the pitch, crossing the ball into Rosette on his favored left foot. Yet Hakim Ziyech, what people will tell me, why is he not playing? Ziyech has got talent, but Ziyech does not want to be at Chelsea. And when you don't want to be at Chelsea, this is how you play. I'm sorry, this was disgusting, terrible performance. He should be ashamed of himself. They should leave him in Zagreb and tell him to catch a car back. I'm telling you now, do not let him on the plane today. His performance was disgusting. He, you know what? Tuchel has the right to come out today and throw them all under the bus. Openly discuss it. Say, you were all crap. Literally, they were all terrible. The good. Listen, there were two good players today on the pitch. Two. I'm, I'm genuinely saying two, and I might even be stretching it. Rhys James. Rhys James's delivery was beautiful as always. Rich James almost got us back into the game when we didn't deserve it, hit the post with a great individualistic move. But the one that Rich James, the cross that he put in and Brozier and Kai were late. Brozier and Kai need to know who Rich James is. Rich James delivers those ball on a saucepin maybe 20, 30 times a season. Yet we do not capitalize on them. It was disgusting once again. Then we need to take a look at Kepa. Kepa's saves today were amazing. The one with the right hand onto the crossbar, wonderful. Then there were a few where he got down low. Then there were a few with his kicking. 
Kepa was not an issue today. You know what? Kepa, in my opinion, should start against Fulham. I genuinely would start him. But this is my views, guys. I'm really upset. I'm really frustrated. We absolutely fudged it up today. Don't want to swear to kids watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Peace out. I'm out. Yes, I'm very